one. This is a 10 to 15 minute hip routine for runners that are, it's basically targeting every kind of angle of the hip that we can get into. So we've got a bunch of tissue stuff. We've got some actual joint and stretch stuff. Um, so whether you've got glute pain or hip flexor issues or whatnot, going through this entire routine, again, 10 to 15 minutes, just sit down and watch a TV show and do it or something, um, is a great call for you. So let's dig into it. What's up everyone? This is a 10 to 15 minute hip routine for runners that are, it's basically targeting every kind of angle of the hip that we can get into. So we've got a bunch of tissue stuff, we've got some actual joint and stretch stuff. Um, so whether you've got glute pain or hip flexor issues or whatnot, going through this entire routine, again 10 to 15 minutes, just sit down and watch a TV show and do it or something, um, is a great call for you. So let's dig into it. What's up everyone? This is a 10 to 15 minute hip routine for runners that are, it's basically targeting every kind of angle of the hip that we can get into. So we've got a bunch of tissue stuff, we've got some actual joint and stretch stuff. Um, so whether you've got glute pain or hip flexor issues or whatnot, going through this entire routine, again 10 to 15 minutes, just sit down and watch a TV show and do it or something, um, is a great call for you. So let's dig into it. What's up everyone? This is a 10 to 15 minute hip routine for runners that are, it's basically targeting every kind of angle of the hip.
hip that we can get into. So we've got a bunch of tissue stuff. We've got some actual joint and stretch stuff. Um, so whether you've got glute pain or hip flexor issues or whatnot, go through this entire routine, again, 10 to 15 minutes, just sit down and watch a TV show and do it or something, um, is a great call for you. So let's dig into it. sound up here we What's go up, everyone and transition all right guys episode 64 coach nate here uh, over at the run experience going solo once again because my man craig he's out he's playing in the burning man desert um out and about uh in the wonderful world of nevada i'm just gonna adjust this sound a little bit and I want to make sure y'all can hear me. So let's go do this as this can, can you guys hear me as this switches over. I'll be paying attention to that. I'm just going to zoom this camera in. It's just me. I don't need to be that too far up today, right? Something like this. I'm all focused. Lovely, 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 lovely. So we are going to talk all about running shoes today. That is going to be the focus of today's discussion. I've got a few up here. We've got a really uh, great group of guests coming from Brooks today. They were kind enough to send us their brand new Levitate 2s, these sexy beasts right here. And I wanted to talk to them about really everything that goes into running shoes. You know, I always felt that uh, the advice it, of, hey, find the shoe that works for you is correct. Uh, but I also feel like it's kind of a cop out. It's really easy for me to lazily be like, ah, just find the shoe that's right for you because what does that mean, right? What does a good shoe mean? What does right even mean? So I wanted to go into that a little bit today and then we have that special guest who from Brooks who's gonna give us the inside perspective of a shoe company. What do they look for when they design shoes? Uh, what types of shoes do they, do they need to create for all the different types of runners out there? What problems are they trying to solve? And I thought it'd be really fun to connect you guys with them so we could talk. It'll be like one of these things, but like a real thing. So they'll get on Skype. Um, tech guy stuff, I'm very excited. I think I'm doing okay so far. Um, truth be told, am I very loud? Good, video sounds great, sounds good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a totally interesting sock liner in this. They've really built this knit upper, which is kind of nice. It uh, hugs pretty pretty well, so we'll get into the details there. Um, but for this week's giveaway, which I want to give a little shout out to people from the very beginning, uh, you can win one of these. Well, not just one of these, you could technically win two of them, one for your right foot and your left foot. Uh, they're giving away a pair of either the Levitate 2s or, um, what is their other shoe? It's, um, I'll pull it up here just so I can make sure I'm getting the name correct. Or the Bedlams. It's kind of cool to have a shoe named the Bedlam, right? All you need to do to enter is click that Gleam link in the description. If you are listening to the recording of this and you're not live, well, guess what? We're gonna do the drawing next week, September 5th. Um, so make sure you get in there and, uh, and, and, and enter because you'll be able to win a free pair of shoes. Pretty sweet, huh? Um, let's check in with all of you guys. Um, Edward Wickham says, that was a real Don Abs get smart moment with the shoe up to your ear. I got you, Edward. Um, 
Jeff Riley says, I've been told that no shoe can fix bad running form. You know, Jeff, it's a very great point. Um, shoes are important tools. Uh, and let's say I am a craftsman. I need to have the right hammer. But it doesn't teach me how to hammer. If I'm not very good at that, I'm going to be banging nails bent and sideways. They're going to fall out later. I'm going to like catch on clothing. Uh, so there is a whole skill element and these two things really come together. Uh, let's go to the top of the list and say hello to all the lovely people on today. So Jessica, what's up Jessica? Tanay um, from Hampton. Uh, Edward, Yelimi going solo again, that's right. Mark Straub. I can handle it, Mark. I think I can. Um, Yelimi, you got your book. That's so exciting. Yelimi was the winner of last week's giveaway where she got a signed copy. Go pull it out. We keep it up on the desk right now because it's been like kind of a fun book to flip through. The Run Fast, uh, Cook Fast, Eat Slow book. A signed copy of this guy. And uh, it's such a great book, guys. I definitely recommend checking it out. Signed just like this one is. Uh, super, super awesome for, you know, all the nutritional demands, different, different ways to mix it up. My wife and I have been trying to cook more vegetarian. Uh, we still eat meat, but we're just trying to not eat as much. And uh, we've gotten some great recipe ideas in there. Let's see here. Prasad says, hey, Prasad, I've developed IT band recently. Can you suggest some exercises for it? Uh, what exactly am I doing wrong? Uh, we can certainly talk about that if we get to it in our shoe company. You can also just check out IT band on our YouTube channel. Because I don't know if you know this, but we put a lot of videos out every single week. And if you search your problem, your body part, in one of our literally 350 to 400 videos we've published, you'll probably have a few that will go directly into your issue. And that's really the greatest place to start. Um, uh, Edward says, I'll be happy to be your salmon foil this week. I know, it's really not the same when I don't have anyone to kind of poke or hassle over my shoulder. Karen says, I like how the coach in the intro keeps changing hats. Uh, Kirk, he's a special one right there. He uh, knows how to, to bring it. Um, Fabio from Brazil, Ponta Grossa, very cool. Uh, Pedro, what's up from Boston? Pedro, I'm going to be in Boston next week. Craig and I are going to be in Boston next week for a little work. We'll have to give you a high five. Um, Karen says, uh, get a foam roller, talking about the IT band. Let's see who else is coming in. If you're just coming in, say hello, say where you're coming from. Jeff Wiley, eight millimeter drop seems kind of high. I like the Pure Foles, only four. Uh, the eight millimeter is a little bit higher. The uh, We'll get into the specifics of the Brooks, why it's designed that way. Um, Dave Friswell says, Nate, hey, let's hear about the Torrens. Uh, I've been running in those as well. If you guys follow me on Strava, I will post a photo of the shoes I've been running in late. Uh, they are great. I was in the Escalani's before, which was a little bit more of a minimal uh, Ur shoe or just a little bit of a lighter one. This felt like the equivalent of uh, a little bit of a beefier, softer, but still very light. Um, pretty soft, pretty responsive, but just good for some of those longer runs. I've been, I've been liking it a lot. Uh, Jeff says I have the Torns also, had a slim dome mallet from those for a bit, not quite adapted. It does take a little bit to adapt to the ultras and even right now I'm only running in them a few days a week and I'm running in other shoes that I know work for me a few days a week. Lizzie, what's up from Athol Mass? What's up Lizzie? Getting all of you guys in here. Sabrina, what's up? All of you guys here. Corey McLean, hello from Barbados, a quilting jewel. Hi from New Hampshire. Uh, man, it is almost getting to be that time of year in New England where everything turns really beautiful for a few precious weeks. You don't feel as bad about eating maple sugar candies and then all of a sudden you get hit hard, you know, with that whole winter thing, which we kind of know about in California, but not too much. David says, East Coast, Maryland. Great being here. I do like the style of those shoes. They are pretty cool. Wesley Fung, what's up from Cape Town, South Africa? Wesley, how are you? Um, we have a bunch of local athletes that I work with racing in South Africa this weekend. They're, they're not racing right now, but they're down there for the uh, Ironman 70.3 World Championships, which is happening this Saturday and Sunday. So if you're down there and you see some triathletes, give them a high five. I don't think they're racing in Cape Town. I think they might be at another location. Uh, let's see here. I love Ghost 11s. Thank you, Brooks. Mark says, I run the Escalante 1.5s normally and use the Torrens for my long run. For sure, that's a good mix. Hi from Turkey. Whew. Well, we have caught up with everyone now, haven't we? So, a few other fun updates. Today, guys, is my 35th birthday. And uh, I couldn't think of spending it a better way than doing this show 
with, uh, with you online. Um, I am gonna be whisked away by my wife after. She told me after the live show, I gotta shut things down because we're going down uh, to Central Coast California to hang out for a few days, get on the beach, get into the mountains, maybe a little wine country here and there. And what's really fun is that we are going to Airbnb in a teepee. I've definitely never done that before. So hey, I get to 35 years of life, I can say I've slept in a teepee. That will be pretty fun. Um, that is going to be the thing for the weekend. I got this big fat ribeye steak that I'm gonna to grill tonight, which I'm very excited that we will split a good bottle of wine. So we're downhill from here, guys. It is all good things coming. So before our guest Jenna comes and calls in in about five minutes, I wanted to go through some of the different shoes that I have worn or, or worn recently, you know, just to talk about them a little bit. First of all, the the New Balance, the the Fresh Foams, the uh, the Zante has been uh, was kind of a go-to for me for running on the roads this spring, getting ready for the SF Half Marathon, which I ran um, just in July with our whole team from the Run Experience. I like this shoe. Uh, I'm a neutral guy. This was neutral. It had um, I think maybe four to six millimeters of heel toe offset, a um, little lower to the ground, um, a good mix of of something that felt cushiony but also pretty responsive. So I like this. I wasn't doing runs much longer than 90 minutes, so I felt comfortable extending my runs here. If I was gonna do runs longer than that, I would have probably gone into saying like Torrens or something a little bit beefier. But kind of a good shoe for me for doing my runs that were in like the five to six to 11 to 12 mile range where I'm doing some speed, some tempo, and some hill work. This was a great little thing right here. This morning, I ran in my strikes. I did this gnarly workout in the gym, uh, and I and I went hard. Uh, it was a little CrossFit style workout where we ran a mile. We did 45 wall balls and 45 burpees. Ran another mile, and then we did another 45 wall balls and 45 pull ups. And it was broken up the wall balls and pull ups, but uh, that was that was the full thing. Uh, and I ran in these shoes, and I like this. It's a light shoe, pretty flexible strike interval. I wouldn't necessarily put much more than say 5K worth of mileage in this because uh, it just doesn't have enough support or enough cushioning. But for being in and out of the gym, a lot of you guys work out in the gym and you're looking for a good gym shoe. Uh, I really like this. Lower, I feel pretty stable, uh, responsive when I run, and I can really feel the ground, which is the opposite of one of the other shoes that I've been running a little bit, which is the Ultra Duo. Now. I like this shoe. This is great for some of my long runs and recovery runs, really high stack height, meaning the Ultra is still a zero drop shoe, but it's like 1970s platform shoes where you've got a nice elevated forefoot and a heel. Um, but what's interesting with this shoe, sometimes you feel like with a shoe like this, you would be running on soft, fluffy pillows where you just wouldn't get any response at all. They've actually made something that's incredibly light and decently stiff and responsive. So you get the protection by being off the ground, being elevated, but you still get that responsiveness. So this has been a fun shoe, you know, for me to run in, but you can kind of see the difference, right? Like super, super low and one that's stacked up a little higher. For me, um, I really like the variety in shoes. We're spoiled in that we get access to a lot of different shoes to wear. Uh, and I find that my body moves differently in different shoes a little bit. When I'm in uh, softer cushion shoes all the time, I feel like I tend to run a little sloppier. I get a little lazy, and then my, my foot starts hitting the ground a little harder because I'm trying to find the ground. When I go to, say, my more minimal shoe, something really light and thin, I don't run that way anymore. I, I can't do as many miles, but I run more carefully. I run more light on my feet. And I think this is important, guys, because you weigh what you weigh. Gravity still exists. There's nothing that you're gonna put between you and the ground that is going to make that force disappear, right? That impact is still going to be there. It's up to us where we want that impact to go. If we get a little lazy, sometimes all that impact goes into our heel, it goes into our shin, it goes into our knee or our low back. But if we can figure out how to run a little bit more connected with better posture, which is what you know 95% of our videos are about and our training programs and the training club are all about, all of a sudden you are gonna be able to run in a lot more connected way. So it looks like we have Derek calling in. 
So we're gonna get this going. Hey, Derek. Hey, Jenna. I'm doing well. Um, let me pipe you in here to our system. This is where all the tech stuff really comes in. Guys, I've been training for this moment. Let's see if we can get this whole thing to connect. So we're gonna go Skype video chat. Big moment. Transition over. And we're gonna bring this down a little bit. Um, let's see if they can hear you. I wanna make right. sure my little loopback audio thing is working. Um, okay. You want, I can go run and grab some headphones too. Yeah, that's not the thing. I just wanna make sure they can hear you. Uh, can you guys hear Jenna? Test, test. <laughs> test, test. Here we go. Let me make sure this is, should be working. The clicking is back. Let's see if this goes away at some point. Okay. Here, let me bring this back up a little bit. All right. Hey. I'm going to adjust this. So, Jenna, welcome to our TRE Live Show. Thank you. Yeah, Happy to be very, here. very cool. Totally. Now, just so this is, guys, this is for Jenna. This isn't for you. Uh, I've got like two cameras I'm looking at, and uh, Jenna thinks I'm going to be a very rude date because <laughs> I'm going to be looking at you guys through this camera, even though she's down here. She's just going to like see the bottom half of my face, for better or worse. Um, no worries. I was prepared but we can for do it. it. <laughs> so, so for, uh, for this show, uh, we are talking uh, everything about running shoes today. And before you got on, I was just sharing a little bit about the, my experiences with running shoes. I'm definitely not a running shoe expert. Um, just from someone who likes to wear different shoes, I get access and exposure to a lot of different brands and different styles. Um, the last year, I've done everything from you know, running in shoes that I want that feels good, like lifting in the gym and doing short intervals, to running a 50K on the trails, to running or trying to run a fast, at least for me, half marathon on the road, right? So I, I think about shoes in certain respects as like different uh, arrows in the quiver, right? And how do I sort of balance those things? So I wanted to hear your perspective on how you guys tackle that at Brooks. And then, of course, we could talk about uh, the fun shoes that you guys are giving away on this live show. For example, this guy, the Brooks Levitate 2s. I just did a 15 by 1 minute uh, on off uh, fartlek style yesterday and uh, was definitely pretty happy with it. I love like the upper, the feel, pretty responsive. Um, and if you guys want to win a pair of these or the bedlams, all you need to do is click the link below. Uh, hit that Gleam link. You'll be able to check out some of the Brooks resources, learn a little bit more. That'll enter you into the giveaway. We'll do the drawing at the end of the next week. Someone is going to walk away with a free pair of shoes. Um, awesome. So, Jenna, why don't we start a little bit, um, you know, with you. Like, how long have you been uh, working for Brooks? And, and what made you want to work for a shoe company? Yeah. Um, so... Yes, again, happy to be here. Um, I have been a footwear product line manager here at Brooks for five years now. And uh, to be honest, I've just kind of always been a running nerd and, and always kind of had in my mind that, uh, that I would be working in footwear specifically. Um, so I majored in exercise science. I ran, I mean, I, I was on my first track and field team at age five. So wow. um, my parents both ran in college. It was definitely like part of part of the path all along and um, wasn't always like a straight path to getting straight to footwear but I uh, was lucky enough to get the opportunity to join Brooks five years ago and have been uh, geeking out on shoes ever since. That's really cool. Now have you always done the same uh, job within Brooks? Like what got you into the position you are in today? Yeah, so when I, uh, the, the role I had before I was in Brooks was managing a specialty running store, um, mm. which if anyone hasn't been to a specialty running shop, but it's a great resource that you can go to where it's usually, um, you know, locally owned and you have people who are really experts in how to get, uh, fit a shoe to kind of your specific needs and wants. Exactly. Um, so I was managing one of those types of stores 
um, and I applied for an asso the associate footwear product line manager, kind of the entry level role that got you into um, where I am today. So yep, so every role I've had at Brooks has been some progression of a, of a product line manager. So that's an interesting place because you're standing somewhere in between uh, the shoe company and the stores and the runners. So really understanding what's going on both sides and getting the right shoe on the right runner's foot. Yeah, that's cool. Exactly, yeah. The, the role of the PLM is really to represent the voice of the consumer and the market to the internal footwear team so that we can create kind of the right strategy that's, that's runner focused. Totally. So why don't we, we could take this in a bunch of different directions, but you know, what, what, um, let's say this, like what makes you excited and passionate about running shoes specifically, right? Like what, like what about this, like how does it like influence runners experiences? It gets them in the door. Like, like what about this whole thing do you find particularly powerful? Um, well, I think it's interesting, earlier you used the phrase, like, you have this quiver of shoes for the different kind of activities that you're doing, which is great and all over the place. And there's a lot of people um, who, who are able to, you know, test out different things for different experiences. And ideally, what we're able to bring to life is that um, by creating these big, unique experiences in our footwear line, we can make whatever that person's doing in, in that product easier or more fun or um, or a lot of people just want a shoe that they can forget they have on their feet so we're really cognizant of you know what motivates different people and uh, and how we can kind of drive what those differences are in our product to, to help make it the best experience they can have now I imagine that there's a bunch of people I think what's fascinating for me is understanding like how many people are involved in making and building and testing a shoe. Um, can you share that process if you know just that bigger picture? Like like a shoe from like concept to market to actually on the runner's foot, like how long does that take? Um, it, it depends on what, uh, what brand you're working with, but roughly it's about 18 months from the initial brief handoff. Um, so to give an example, next week we'll be handing off our, our handoffs for the shoes that will be out in fall 2020. Wow, um, so, so you guys are a year ahead. A little realm of like how much we have to live in the future and the present and everything in between. Um, so yeah, usually it's about 18 months. It starts with, uh, so we function in what's called a triad. So that's the footwear product line manager, a footwear designer, and a developer. Okay. Um, so the PLM is kind of that, like what is the vision for where the shoe needs to go to be right for consumers in the future um, and for the market in the future. Um, the designer then takes kind of these kind of nebulous words and, and ideas and turns this turns it into something you know beautiful on a on a piece of paper and a 3D modeling, um, and then the the footwear developer helps us to make that into a reality. And there's a lot of other um, functions involved like coloring and yeah. uh, and manufacturing and operations and all that. I've, I, I'm sure you can't share the colors for 2020, but like what goes into like the trends of the colors? Like how do you, you guys kind of already know the colors that we're going to be into like two years from now? That's kind of trippy. I'm pretty sure you don't have yeah. a DeLorean sitting anywhere, <laughs> you know, that you can jump in. Um, so. And I don't know if that's like your part of the involvement or not, but like what, what goes into that? Yeah, I can speak to it. Um, the, so you might notice that usually you see every season, kind of everyone seems to be on the same page from even from different brands to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, so part of the reason for that is there's actually a whole industry around like what colors will be trending in different seasons. So our color team and design team do subscribe to those kind of trend books and color books. Um, they visit shows that are, are focused on, you know, what's, what's happening in each season. And then on top of that, they do independently their own inspiration travel trip. And so there's actually a theme for any given season of what's going to be our key colors for the season. And then we'll make sure we're also trend right with what we expect to see um, from, a, from the fashion standpoint. Now, what are your observations for, like, runners fashion sense and taste, right? Because it's a little all over the place. Uh, like I was just holding up some different shoes. 
um, and these are not Brooks, but just different companies. This is a small company called Strike Movement. Super simple, black and white. They just do these like one color shoes. And honestly, like with your guys Levitate, like this is a pretty sleek design, right? It's like kind of the black and the gray. Um, this is just an example of, of Ultra that I have. They've gone super bright and, and highlighted like do you guys like a mix of both? Do you guys find like, man, like the, and I'm kind of joking, but like the uglier, lighter, brighter, <laughs> the color, like we need it. Yeah, I think in terms of both color and even even just the experiences you mentioned, um, we're one of the few brands in the industry that's focused on running exclusively. So we try to provide kind of a variety. There's different runners prefer different colors and potentially different experiences, especially because not everyone has access to a quiver of shoes, right? So yeah. kind of got to hone in on what's kind of the right thing for you the majority of the time if you don't have, you know, unlimited running shoe resources. Um, so yeah, so in both, I would say we really focus on providing a range, something that's really yeah. kind of safe down the middle, like that levitate you have there, or like I have the bedlam. Uh, like a bedlam here that is yeah a bit there we go yeah oh yeah it is it's still got the same like silver around but then we yeah. got the nice bright upper that's pretty cool yeah okay and i can speak to what that silver is if you want or we can hold off till later let's let's jump in i'm i'm okay. curious i'm like a little you know I, I love the it's all bright and flashy you got that there too what's what's going on yeah so uh so you have the levitate there that but as you said that's the levitate two um, and then we're introducing for the first time a support version of the Levitate 2. So this is one of the um, newest shoes in what we call our Energize line of shoes. And that silver that you referenced, this is what's called uh, DNA AMP, is what we call this midsole technology. Um, mm -hmm. If you want me to get nerdy with it, it's a, it's a PU-based foam. Dude, we are, we are a, film. I was gonna say, we are a running YouTube channel uh, okay. where everyone comes in uh, and geeks out about running like nerd away. Perfect. Okay. So yeah. So DNA amp. I'm I'm gonna go for it then. It's it's a PU based foam and it's so there's a there's a base inside here that's wrapped in like a almost like wrapping paper in mm -hmm. it's called TPU film and that that's the silver part that you see here is the TPU film that's wrapping around it. Um, the great thing about that is uh, PU as as opposed to EVA which is in most traditional running shoe midsoles is uh, inherently more responsive and springy, mm. which is what we're trying to get out of our Energize line of shoes. Uh, and then that TPU film helps to kind of encase it. So the goal that we're looking for here is, you know, as you step into it, you are going to sink into it a little bit. You don't want it to be super hard and stiff, but right. that, then you're going to get that response back. So it's kind of like the energy you put into it is going to, because of that encasement, help return so you get that springy, responsive ride. That's cool. And you're starting to put that in a bunch of different shoes, right? So or is it is it three. only for, okay, for three? Mm-hmm. Which for ones are those? So we, yeah, for the time so being, the so Levitate. We, the Levitate is our kind of high end, it's a neutral running shoe based on, you know, neutral biomechanics and has that full length DNA amp. Um, the Bedlam is, uh, essentially the the like brother or sister to the levitate so it's it the goal is that no matter whether you need a little bit of support or you do not we want you to be able to have the same experience um the same you know hopefully visual that you like the look of and not have to sacrifice something just because of something that's out of your control like right. biomechanics and then the sure. third shoe which is out tomorrow or saturday I think. Oh. Is, oh sorry, come on. Is the uh, Ricochet, which is kind of like a little brother. So you might say like these two are like fraternal twins. Oh, and cool. And then uh, a little brother to the Levitate is called the Ricochet. So it has a combination of um, DNA amp, a little bit of DNA amp, and then it has a Biomogo DNA uh, under layer there. So your foot's interacting with that top stack, uh, but then you have kind of a little bit of a faster ride overall. It's kind of an in-between of the Levitate and the Launch, if you're familiar with do that you, shoe. Do you, ha do you have a little sneak preview for us? I don't, I don't know if you do. Uh, yeah, we, we can, I, I can grab one for you here. Um, yeah, but, no, I'm, uh, I'm, putting you, I'm putting you on the spot. If you have it, great. No if not, no worries. No problem. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> uh, we'll figure that right out. Um, but um, I did forget to mention that the, uh, 
for the bedlam specifically, we have a uh, it's DNA amp, and then this top part here. This is actually mm. a guide rail, so that yeah. that support component comes in. Um, that's really cool. So I'm getting a few questions about the shoes. I'm just having these people chime in. Um, uh, Gene Sath, this is more of a request. Please add the silver bottom to the next version of the Blux Gristlin, super chic. Um, uh, Emmanuel says, what's a no-go for running shoes? I don't, we can probably expand on that. Uh, more specifically, Jenna asks, will Levitate 3 continue with the knit upper or go back to the way the Levitate 1 fit? Uh, the Levitate 3, it's not going to go back to like a traditional collar construction like we had on the Levitate 1. Um, we see kind of our target consumer for, for these styles. We, we want the fit to be, you know, where, where people expect a Brooks fit to be. Uh, but we're going to continue to progress and try to keep a more kind of forward looking uh, aesthetic and design to especially these shoes and the Energize experience. Mm. That's cool. Um, and this is kind of fitting in with my question. Is that, which one is that? That's, this is, is the that the bedlam? Oh, that's the ricochet. Oh, cool. Yep. Very, very cool. So you can see um, it has that DNA amp on top, biomobile yeah. DNA on the bottom, and then just uh, a little can, faster. Yeah, can you hold it back just a little bit from the lens? There we go, a little further away. There we go, cool. So we can get the big picture there. That is rad, right on. Um, very, very cool. So. Uh, Charlie asks, um, would you say, would you have said that Brooks is more focused on minimal, uh, minimalism and you kind of mentioned, you know, Brooks is also, you know, forward thinking, uh, like what, what do those sort of mean? Is, is, is minimalism something that you guys think about? For sure. Yeah, we definitely think about it. So that's kind of one of those experiences that I mentioned. We want to make sure we are you know, accessible to uh, and creating experiences for all who run. So we have our Pure Project line of shoes, uh, yeah. which we introduced kind of in the, a little bit in the heat of that barefoot minimal movement. Um, one thing that we did, uh, that we were really focused on in introducing those shoes was, you know, how do we make sure we're delivering something that has sound biomechanics and fundamentals that we truly believe in um, so that we're not risking you know hurting people um, so we can we can deliver something that is this unique experience but we we believe we're, we're doing right by runners yeah and that, that, that loose watch shoes are still in our line the pure flow and the pure cadence that's cool now I remember running into uh, Jonathan Beverly a few times last year and Jonathan is the former editor of the running times he is a, an incredible freelance writer for Runner's World, among many other uh, you know, magazines and, and websites. He's a coach and an author, and he's written a few uh, different books out. But I remember last year we ran into him, and he was looking into like what is happening in the development space with running. Where is innovation occurring? And he was really fascinated with what's going on in the upper of the shoe. He says that it seems like the shoe industry in general is really putting some some time and effort into revamping the top of the foot experience. Like, what has Brooks' experience been with that? And, and we see that we get this like knit construction, we get this you know sock like uh, feel around the heel. Uh, yeah, what's that? What's that? Um, what's that been like for for Brooks? Yeah, you had a little bit of an unintentional pun in there because this is called the vamp of the shoe. Oh, there so we we're go. We're revamping. Um, so, what our experience has been with, I mean, you've seen a ton of different uh, materializations from different brands, so um, so there's kind of, okay, we're going to get nerdy with it. So there's, there's two different kind of realms of like knit. Um, so typically when people say like knit upper, they're referencing what's called a flat knit upper, and I think mm. you had, uh, so this is actually, these shoes are partly flat knit uppers, the yeah. ribbed collar here is flat knit. Yeah. Um, and there, there are other brands that are using that flat knit uh, construction. Okay. Um, most, like, maybe more traditional looking meshes, although they don't necessarily need to be traditional looking, are called warp knits. Um, mm. And those are the ones that have, like, uh, like, the zonal holes, and it's kind of more of like a flat surface that has holes in it, and you can make that engineered into zones. Um, and that's what you see on shoes like um, the Glycerin and Transcend and Ghost and Adrenaline. 
Um, yeah. Right now, those are all warp knit upper constructions. And then there's the flat knits, which we have, like I said, a little bit on these guys. We also have a full flat knit upper on a shoe called the Revel, um, okay. which is a $100 cushion shoe in our line. And then this is a combination of, like I said, that flat knit. And then this is what's called a circular knit. So it's a little different look than that kind of like sweatery mm. um, knit mm -hmm. construction that I think most people would attribute to, um, to like being a, a traditional knit. But technically, they're all knit uppers. That's cool. So yeah, you can you can go down the rabbit hole of all the different oh, yeah. construction, etc. And when you guys are innovating from one year to the next, like I know sometimes like. The knit feels good. Like, is it breathable? Are people's feet moving around them or sliding around them too much? Like, like, what are the factors that go into a good, or just a good upper experience? Like, what are you guys looking for? And when you get feedback, say from previous lines, like, what types of, you know, we don't have to go into specifics, but like, what types of questions um, are you looking for from runners? And this might, this yeah. might. It, well, actually, we'll, I'm, getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll start there, and then I've got my next okay. question queued up. Yeah, so every, um, every running shoe in terms of the upper well, and, and the tooling is based around what's called a last, and that's like a, a foot form. It, it looks like the shape of a foot. It's, it's a really heavy material, and, and every single shoe is like built around it. So if, if, it, if this had a last in it, it would just be kind of sticking up inside here. And our goal is to use um, – is to is – to, maximize the capability of whatever material we're using to fit as close to the shape of that last as possible. Gotcha. Um, and the way that we, um, we assess whether we're doing that is through uh, how you actually put the pattern together. If you think about, like, I don't know if you've ever sewn before, but there's a lot of patterning work that helps us get a nice, like, snug fit around the arch. Um, there's also, like, measurements called, like, called the stick length that you use, mm. so you actually measure the literal length between, on the inside of the shoe, between the heel and the toe. Mm -hmm. And then we do very extensive wear testing, and we, we work really hard to recruit people who are kind of like the target consumer, or somebody who's worn previous versions of the shoes. We have great wear testers. Um, as well as internal testing um, on the biomechanics side, which includes kind of perception of uh, when, we're, when we're biomechanics testing, they're gonna test the shoe that we're trying right now, directly yeah. against the previous version of that shoe so we can get that instantaneous comparison of one versus the other. Um, yeah, and then, and then it comes back to like, okay, if, if it's fitting a little long, what do we need to do with the pattern to, to adjust it and get it, get it where it needs to be and, and that type of work. Yeah, you, I imagine you get different types of runners, some people who like love the previous version of the shoe and they just want to stay with it, and then sometimes others who are, you know, they're they're like oh I like I like the new stuff. Do you guys always yeah. expect that back and forth? Yeah, I think it's a uh, it's one of those things where you can never please all of the people. Um, we try to do the best we can to you know be true to what we believe is a is a good core Brooks fit. Um, you know, it doesn't always work out. It, that's just the nature uh, nature of the game. There's a lot of people, a lot of hands touching these. So. Um, but yeah, we try to, you know, do as best we can for the majority, but we realize that there's going to be some people that it's not necessarily going to work for season after season. Totally. Now, when I was in Boston this year, uh, supporting runners, not racing myself, you guys had a pretty rockin' pair, I believe, of lobster shoes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to ask something else. Oh, <laughs> about <laughs> lobsters. Um, yeah. When, when, uh, how long have uh, you guys been creating like special edition shoes for different races? And do you see that uh, expanding? Like if runners, because I feel like some companies do things for New York, they do for Boston. Um, like what should uh, runners expect when they're going to these major races? Especially if they're like, ooh, I want a new pair of shoes and yeah. I would love some like race edition ones. Yeah, we call those um, special makeups. Um, we've been doing them for about four years now. I think it actually started with a launch, or sorry, with a, with a lobster themed shoe at Boston was the first SMU that we ever did. So we kind of brought it back as like a little like nod to, you know, where, where we started with these types of projects. Um, and yeah, you, can, you should expect to continue to see those from us, um, you know, especially at the big events like Boston and, and so 
Um, usually that even involves maybe even a different materialization than the uh, what's called the inline version of the shoe. Um, oh, wow. But that helps us to bring a lot of like different looks to the same you know bottom unit that people are used to. And what's that process like? Are you guys like a year ahead? Are you guys already planning like Boston 2020 shoes or 2019 shoes? You already have that. Yeah, I'm trying to think. We there's like a you know, I think there's potentially a Christmas one that's been around for a few months, and I, I'm trying to think of the latest one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So I know fun. they definitely started on, on the next Boston. Well, that I is so fun. I, don't, I can't give it away, though. You can't, you can't give it away, no, of course. Like, yeah, you got to be there to, to get it, but those are such a fun um, It'll be run experience. happy, I'll tell you that. I love it. Um, <laughs> so, Jenna, we have a lot of uh, lovers of the trail on our channel who you know, do everything from just shorter runs to, to the ultra scene. And we got a question from, from Aaron and really kind of Jessica asking, what's the future of the Brooks trail shoes? Yeah, I mean, any, anyone in particular, or, I, mean, I can kind of outline what our trail framework is right now. Why don't you start there and I'll see if Aaron yeah. can, will, will jump in and ask any yeah. particular trail shoes. Yeah, so the um, the most popular trail shoe in our line is a, a shoe called the Cascadia. Um, and that's been for a long time a shoe that uh, I think has been great for people who are transitioning, especially from road running to trail running. Um, mm. It's a very like familiar fit. Um, it's definitely the most protective trail shoe that we have in the line. So it has a lot sure. of overlays that are going to like protect the toe cap. It has a rock shield. It has big, aggressive lugs. Um, and a lot of people do like to, to through hike and do things like that. Um, they're, they're meant specifically for trail running. And I think that's kind of where you'll see the Cascadia going is how do we make sure this is still a really runnable trail shoe? Um, cool. we introduced a couple new shoes in uh, the last couple years. So one is called the Caldera. Um, and the Caldera is a shoe, it has a little bit higher stack height than the Cascadia, but not excessively so. Um, mm. And it's a four millimeter offset. So the midsole height, it's 20 millimeters of midsole in the forefoot and 24 in the heel. Oh, and wow, has okay. a little bit of like a rock to it, like a, like like rocking, like that kind. <laughs> um, yeah. And there's no rock plate in there because there's just so much midsole that you don't really need it. Um, on the bottom, it's we're, we're looking more at getting surface area traction instead of big, deep lugs. So yeah. it's probably better not for like deep muddy surfaces, but for um, for trails that uh, are looking more at surface area traction. And really we're focused on how light can we get that shoe given yeah. the size of the midsole. Yeah, um, it's amazing how light these bigger shoes are now. Like it's really incredible. Um, yeah, it just it kind of blows my mind. Like you see these giant things that people are wearing, and they're just they don't they don't weigh that much at all. Yeah. Erin um, uh, follows up. She says, "I've tried Cascadia and found them to be very stiff. I was interested yeah. to see if there are any more minimal shoes in the future." Yeah. So I would recommend if if the Cascadia feels stiff, I would recommend trying what's uh, a shoe called the Pure Grit. Um, so that sits in that I mentioned the Pure Flow and the Pure Cadence earlier. The Pure yeah. Grit is kind of the trail shoe that lives in that kind of more um, low to the ground, four millimeter offset. Um, it does have a, you know big lug, so it would it would work well in a lot of different trail situations. Um, but we're not looking at adding a ton of overlays and parts of pieces to the top of it because it is in that kind of like pure and simple and low to the ground world. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and then the one other shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go for it. The one other trail shoe we have in the line, is, it's called the Mazama. Um, and that's okay. kind of our go fast trail shoe. So like low to the ground, meant to go, meant to go speedy, super, super. The Madonna. Yeah, Mazama. That, oh, okay, right on. Um, yeah. That's cool, that's super cool. Well guys, if uh, you're just tuning in or you haven't been in for that long, we are talking to uh, Jenna Winger. And who's uh, <laughs> not looking at her, Jenna Winger. Uh, from Brooks, uh, their product development team. And uh, for this week's giveaway, 
the Brooks is very generously raffling off a free pair of shoes. You can enter by getting into the Gleam link in the description of the YouTube video. You have an option to win these nice pair of Levitates 2s or the Bedlams uh, that Jenna is holding up. Uh, get on it, guys. We all want a free pair of shoes. It's a nice arrow to add to the quiver if you don't, uh, if you've just been holding on to one pair a little bit too long. Um, let's do this. Let's talk about, uh, you know, maybe some some do's and don'ts about breaking shoes in. Um, what's what what like type of guidelines or advice do you give or do you use yourself when when breaking in a new pair or trying a new pair out for the first time? Uh, I think like for example, like the classic mistake is something that I made during my second marathon. I started with one pair of shoes, I ran the same pair of shoes for my entire 16 week build up and I realized at like the end of week 15 my shoes were like toast. Like I could not run another step in them and it was like a very stressful thing to like break in a new pair of shoes like right before my race. Yeah, I mean that's the classic example and probably the, the best example is you don't you don't want to buy a new pair of shoes, especially a new, you know, a new shoe altogether, new like version of a shoe or a new or different brand or anything like that. Right before uh, a long race or even just a long run, you wouldn't want to start off in a new shoe with a longer run. So um, I'd say the best rule of thumb is, you know, well, I'm, this sounds silly, but make sure you're wearing socks, you know, maybe for the first few bit while you let it kind of get conformed to your foot. Um, yeah. And maybe be a little bit proactive so that you can start by wearing that new shoe for, for shorter days while your previous shoes aren't completely dead so you have the ability to still go on those longer runs without any potential risk. Interesting. Um, we get this question all the time, uh, in general, I'm sure you do too, um, how do I find the right pair of shoes? And I started off the show with the description saying it's like, well, find the shoes that feel right for you and it's it's a, a very simple, not uncorrect statement, but if someone d is asking this question in the first place, chances are they're like, well, that's why I'm asking, because I don't even know what right yeah. is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so... This is a, this is a hard an one. interesting article in the New York Times uh, probably about a year ago um, that said exactly the point that you just made, which is, you know, the best way that you can prevent injuries and, and honestly have the best running experience is by having the shoe that's the most comfortable. So then the problem for runners is like, okay, but how am I supposed to know what's the most comfortable for me? Um, so what we would typically first recommend is if you have a specialty running shop nearby, mm -hmm. that's what they're there for. Um, they are, they know all of the latest shoes and technologies and you know what's been, you know, fitting right on point, what's been fitting off, and uh, and so they're they're going to be best tuned to kind of like take what this big wall of shoes and funnel it into something that makes sense based on what type of activity, activities you're doing and, and how often you're running and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, what type of experience you might prefer underfoot. So that would be our first recommendation. Uh, if, you're, if you're not able to get to a shop like that, um, we, we have some tools on our website that focuses oh, cool. on how you can do, uh, we call it it's a shoe finder. Um, but we also have like an internal version called like the decision tree. So, you know, start with, you know, do you need support or do you not? And there's actually some interesting ways that we can kind of help you figure that out for yourself. Um, That's very cool. And, and then from there, it, we really dive into, okay, how can we simplify this as much as possible to get you to your preferred experience underfoot? Um, yeah. So, it, yeah, so it sounds like, you know, if you can get in and actually try these shoes on, uh, is really good. Um, don't be a rush like I am sometimes where I hate shopping and I want to get in and get out. Like maybe try a few pairs of shoes on. If yeah. you can run in them, that's great. Uh, some, I know specialty stores will allow you to run them at least indoors on a treadmill for like 30 minutes. If you don't like it, you can return them because they really want you in that right one. Um, yeah. You know, th this is a, obviously you are, are very proud of, of the product that Brooks puts out and you want people ideally to, to be loyal to Brooks. How do you balance, you know, brand and shoe loyalty 
you know, with, with finding that right pair that the run specialty guy is going to say, it's like, hey, like, you know, hey, you're a Nike person, but you should really check these Brooks out or vice yeah. versa. Yeah, I mean, so we, like, we don't actually really own any, any stores ourselves outside of, uh, we have one in our, here at our HQ. Um, so one, we just try to be a good partner to, to our retailers and, uh, and provide them with as many options as they could want from us. Um, so that's kind of our first focus is, again, we're hyper-focused on running shoes. So when we talk about categories, we're talking about categories of different types of running shoes. Um, but from there, we don't expect them to come out of, you know, whatever their back room is with like three blue boxes, which is the color of our shoe boxes. Yeah. Um, so it, it's important for people to try different things and different brands are going to work for different people. And we're just focused on how we can do the best we can with our line. That's cool. I like that. Um, well, Jenna, thank you so much for hanging out with us and talking a little bit about um, your experience working at Brooks, the shoe process in general, the different pieces from the upper into the lower, and how people can find a good pair of shoes and, and get into them and not make the mistake like I did, like <laughs> trying to, you know, stressfully find a new pair of shoes like three days right, before the race. race. Yeah. And if you do get those lobster shoes, maybe save them for after bus and not, not bus in itself. <laughs> That's so cool. Not a bad, not bad advice. Not bad advice. Well, Jenna, thank you again so much. Guys, remember, uh, you can enter to win a free pair of Brooks. Just hit that Gleam link below. We'll go ahead and say goodbye to Jenna. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you. Cheers. And um, we will go back to our regular screen here. Transition over, shazam. I can take these guys off. Uh, so anyway, super fun. It was so great to talk to Jenna there, get perspective on Brooks and on everything else. Hopefully for you guys who aren't necessarily big Brooks runners, um, you got something out of it. This is actually the first pair of Brooks shoes I've ever worn. I've just, for whatever reason, never run in them. It's, you know, we kind of get ourselves into certain shoes and it's maybe a good question for you to ask yourself. Um, why am I running in the pair of shoes I am? My running because my friend told me about it because I think they're cool because they're the right ones, etc. Um, you know, however it goes, um, you know, there's always that little blend of things. So it's fun to try different shoes if you can. Uh, take that little extra bit of time at your run specialty store and purposely try a few shoes that maybe isn't your normal brand just to mix it up, see what's out there. You could find a shoe that's hey, I want a cushioned neutral shoe that's good for long runs. Um, most companies are gonna have that line just for you, right? Or I want a tempo trainer, or I want something that has more support. You're gonna see something there. And it's just a fun way to do it. I really think the way you find what feels comfortable for you is through that experience. Seeing how it feels underfoot, lacing it up. What is it like the first five miles? What's it like the first 50? And then by the time you do this, this intangible thing becomes a little bit sharper and uh, a little bit more clear. Um, so, yeah, Edward said that's because you've been Mr. Reebok. I have worked with Reebok for a while in the past. Um, yeah, it was awesome, Jenna, to talk to a Brooks person. Uh, so, guys, we have a few more minutes before we do our giveaway of last week, which let me pull that up just so it jogs my memory. Um, and uh, would love to get any other questions that you guys have going on. Let's see here. Oh yes, it is our race entry, our Revel race entry when we talked to Paul last week. That was super cool. Um, Jeff says, I see holes in the bottom of the pure grits. Is that for drainage purposes? I would say so, um, Jeff. Anytime shoe companies, at least in my experience, are putting any type of hole in the bottom, that's great. Those are really good for, yeah, running through water. Um, for you guys who are doing any obstacle course racing where you're going through a lot of water, it is not fun to have, you know, mud and rocks and water sloshing around your feet and adding a couple pounds. So it's good to pull that off there. 
Um, Dan says, I've always preferred the feel of trail shoes. Is there any downside to using a trail shoe on road running? Uh, that's a good question. You know, I feel like with trail shoes, all depending, there's just a little bit more to them. They're, I think they're a little more rugged. They are a little bit more built up. They, not necessarily the case, but um, you could probably find a lighter, sleeker equivalent for the road. Um, all depending on the grip of the trail, it doesn't sound like you're having this problem. Some lugs are awesome in wet, dry conditions, on pavement and on concrete. I've definitely been on some trail shoes where the rubber is such that they are terrible on the pavement. Like you don't wanna, you don't wanna like run on a sewer grate because you are gonna slip and, and kill yourself. Uh, so you wanna have that there. So I would look at it um, and uh, yeah, I'd mess around a little bit. I've also taken road shoes and run a lot on trails, and I think with a lot of fire roads or basic trails, that's just fine. But when you get into the more extreme situations, especially if you're trying to push speed both up and down hill, uh, especially descending, having a shoe with those lugs will give you that confidence that you know you are not going to die going downhill. Uh, let's see here. What else you guys got for me these last few minutes? Um, Martin Lavar says, I ran a marathon in Innovate's trail shoes because it rained the entire marathon, for sure. Uh, Innovate is a good company. I used to race in those guys myself. They were good. Uh, Tone says, I have a question about shoes. I'm a neutral runner and I usually run with Cumulus Nimbus. I noticed that lately my feet get numb. Is this something related to the shoes I am using? It could relate to the shoe itself depending on where that numbness is occurring. And it could also occur to the lacing. Um, as I'm not a physical therapist, I can't speak super deep on this, but what I can say, especially if you're using this for long runs, training up for um, you know, a marathon or more, and you're starting to be out there, your feet will swell the, the further you go. And what happens is that the, the tight fit that maybe you first had on is becoming too tight as your feet swell up and you're starting to feel some pinching. This was something I dealt with when training uh, in Ironman in a previous life a lot where you would do these really long bikes and then immediately start running and I could feel my feet swell in my bike shoes and then I would have a harder time putting my running shoes on. So that's a big part. Uh, maybe try lacing, uh, stopping if you can, loosening up your laces a little bit can make a big difference there. Let's see what else you guys got for me today on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. One more minute before we do our giveaway. And remember, if you want a free pair of Levitates, just hit that link down below. Uh, Martin, another, or uh, Charlie says, this is funny, nerdy, she's the goddess of the running shoes. Haha, ha, keep it up, Jenna. Yeah, she did a good job. Uh, Martin LeVar again asks, hey, attempting 200 miles in the month of September, how many pairs of shoes should I be sharing the miles with? Uh, it depends on what what you can do and what's available. I would say if you're first, per if, first of all, if you are just a singular shoe person and you're going to two, one of the things I would consider would be, okay, what is my long run shoe and my recovery shoe? That's that shoe that maybe has a little bit more cushioning, a little bit more stack, um, feels a little softer. And then my second shoe would be like, what is my tempo shoe or my speed shoe? Something that is a little bit lighter, a little bit more lower to the ground, gives me a little bit better feel for what's happening. And you know, you split up your mileage accordingly. It might be, you know, at first 60 or 70% uh, in one shoe, and then you're spending 30 to 40% of the other, and then maybe you eventually move to 50-50. Let's see here. Uh, Kelly says, I love Brooks. All my running shoes have been Brooks. Do the levitates come in wide for women? When I tried to buy them before, there was no wide option. I'm sorry we didn't get into that, uh, uh, Kelly, but if you look on their website, that's probably the best place to get that information uh, and check out their little shoe sizing guide. I know a lot of you know run specialty, st specialty stores may not carry every specific model, but if you go to runningwarehouse.com, Check out that shoe. They have got pretty. Uh, they've got a pretty expansive library of, of shoes there. What else we got here? 
Uh, Emmanuel says, good evening, everyone. My granddad got me into running a week ago. Any beginner's tips? Uh, Emmanuel, that's super exciting. Uh, first of all, uh, you're in a good spot on our YouTube channel. We put out three, four new videos a week on workouts, follow-on workouts, run form tips, strength, and injury prevention exercise. It's a lot and can be a little overwhelming. Um, so if you just want to get started with something to follow that's very simple and clear on the day-to-day -day basis, well, you got to join our training club. There's a link down in the description where you can try for seven days free. We have a great beginner running program. We have a great 5K program that we just launched. It's kind of, we haven't officially launched it yet. We're letting our training club members right now uh, get in there and use it. So I would check that out for sure. And guys, look at the time, it is one, which means it is time to do our giveaway from last week. So our Revel Race entry to jog your guys' memory, pun intended, uh, these were these beautiful marathons and half marathons that have uh, extreme negative descending uh, that really sets you up for a fast finish and can qualify you for things like the Boston Marathon. And uh, two entries uh, to any race in 2019. We're going to give one to each person. So our very own Carrie Hale, congratulations. You are a winner to a 2019 entry of your choice to one of the Revel race entries. You could race anywhere from Utah to Mount Lemmon in Tucson, Arizona, out in Hawaii, always in some cool mountainous place. And Barbie Laney from Arroyo Grande, California. Carrie is from Emmett, Idaho. So Barbie Laney, congratulations. Carrie Hale, also congratulations. I'll be reaching out to you via email to get you all connected. Hey guys, that is it. That is it for me. I am pulling the plug because, hey, you only turn 35 once. You got to go and celebrate with uh, with your people. I've gotten to celebrate with you guys online. I'm super excited. Uh, but now uh, I get to go off. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Um, I will see you guys online next week.